Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. The end of Windows 10 is upon us. October 14th, 2025 is the day that Microsoft is cutting off support, sorta, for this now aging operating system. Windows 10, of course, has had a great run. I like Windows 10 quite a bit. I was very impressed when it came out, how well it ran, even on really low-end hardware. Uh, and of course, now we're up to Windows 11. And if you're like me, and if you're holding out on Windows 10 on a few of your computers, you've been getting nagged with these screens when you boot the computer up, urging you to upgrade to Windows 11, warning you of this day. And what I wanted to do in this video was talk about what some of your options are, because for some of you who have older computers that are still fully functional, your message might say, you can't use this computer any longer, and you need to go buy a new one. But you may not need to do that just yet. And so in this video, we're gonna look at a few of your options. One of them is actually extending the life of Windows 10 a little bit longer and still getting security updates. And the other might involve maybe looking at different operating systems that you can try and use for free. Now, the rule of thumb here is that any PC made around 2017 or later should be compatible depending on what chip it has inside. So if you have an Intel processor, an 8000 series or eighth gen chip is going to be compatible. If you have an AMD Ryzen-based computer, their 2000 series Ryzen chips are compatible, but anything before that is not. And this is a big change for Microsoft because typically if you could get Windows working on something, it would just work. But now they are restricting installations only to newer computers that have a TPM 2.0 security chip inside. There are ways to circumvent this requirement. You can get it working on PCs that are not deemed compatible but Microsoft is not supporting that. And at some point, if they institute some breaking change that assumes everybody has one of these chips, it's going to potentially create some issues for you. So they're telling people, don't do it, even though you might be able to. And of course, if you're working in a business or government environment, you do have to be compliant with all these security issues for Windows computers, and you will definitely fail your security audit as a result. So we're gonna have a lot of really good, perfectly functional PCs finding their way out into the secondary market, I think, very soon. But there are some ways you can extend life here. So I'm gonna get out an older PC that is compatible and we'll see what your options are. So on the desk here, I've got my oldest functioning computer I could get working at the moment. This is an old shuttle PC with an aging Celeron processor. It's about six or seven years old. And what we're gonna do here is run the PC Health Check app. This should be on your Windows 10 installation if you've been keeping it up to date. If not, you can go to Microsoft and download the PC Health Check. And when you run this, what it's going to do is a quick analysis of your machine to determine if it's compatible with Windows 11. So I'm gonna click on Check Now here, and it says, hey, you did it. You can upgrade here for free. So this machine we know is compatible. And if I go to see all results here, it can tell me all the things that it meets to be able to install Windows 11. So for this one, uh, what's likely to happen next is that at some point I'm going to see Windows 11 as an option in my Windows update. For some reason, it's not showing up on this PC. It might just be because I just updated it from whatever it was running six years ago. Um, but you will see it in there and you can click on that and bring your computer over to Windows 11 without having to spend any money and it should upgrade everything in place. My recommendation, of course, is to back everything up first, and then you can be assured that your data will come with you, but it shouldn't be too hard of a process here. But what if you have an older PC, or you're not quite ready to go to Windows 11 yet? There is another option, and that option is the Windows 10 Consumer Extended Security Update, or ESU. And what this lets you do is get another year out of your Windows 10 installation, even on hardware that is not Windows 11 compatible. And they've got some weird things here that you can do to implement it. So if you are willing to sync your PC settings with Microsoft, they will let you do this for free. So your privacy is worth about $30. You can redeem a thousand Microsoft reward points, however you earn those, or you can pay 30 bucks to buy yourself the year. And then this will continue things through October 13th, 2026. Business users have a few more options. They, I think they go three years on that, but they escalate the price every year. But for consumers, if you're just trying to keep your computer going, 
uh, this is what you would do for that. Now on my computer here, I can enroll in this just through Windows Update. So if I click on enroll now, it will provide me with the options to do this. You do of course have to sign into your Microsoft account. So if you're running with a local account, you're gonna need to get that going. And they give you some of the options here for extending out your security update. So this might be a good option for many of you right now because you can get another year of security updates on your Windows PCs. That ends in October of 2026 though. So you might find yourself back in this place again at that point. But who knows, maybe Microsoft will continue extending it further, but I think that is unlikely, at least on the consumer side of the business. So another option though to think about is that if you've got a perfectly functioning computer and you're willing to try something new and different, I would suggest looking at an alternative operating system like a Linux distribution. Uh, what we've got up here is the Linux Mint homepage. We're gonna install this or run it at least on this computer in a second so you can see what it looks like. This one kind of offers the right balance for me in hardware requirements, but also ongoing support. Uh, this distribution has been around for a while. Uh, Linux Mint 22.2 is the version that we're going to play with here, which is supported through 2029. And apparently from reading the documentation that once you hit that 2029 date, you can upgrade to the next version and keep going and still have some support for it. So this has the security that you need, it's Linux, so a lot of the Windows malware, or most of the Windows malware won't impact you on this side. And the software now is quite extensive on Linux and it's not very difficult to work with like it was in the past. So you can get your computer up and running, you can get your web browser going, you can do word processing and all sorts of great stuff and have a much longer lifespan for your older PC. The one that I would recommend if your computer is not quite up to Windows 11 specifications is their XFCE edition because it is a lighter weight install. It doesn't look as pretty, but it's going to perform a little better on older hardware. The Cinnamon Edition here is more tuned for modern machines, but it too is very, very lean. So if you are a tinkerer, you might wanna play with both and see which one runs best on your machine. But for this one, uh, we're going to put the XFCE Edition on board. Now they've got some great documentation here as to how to get started. So I would look at that. It's a very nice step-by-step -step guide. We're not gonna step through it here, but I might do a follow-up video where we try a few different installations on older hardware to see how it works and we'll demo uh, getting all of that set up. So why don't we boot up Linux Mint on this machine here and see what it looks like and how it performs. All right, so here is the desktop of the Linux Mint installation. As you can see, it is very clean here. One of the cool things about Linux Mint and Ubuntu and a few of the other major distributions is that they boot into what's called a live boot option where you can play around with the operating system without installing it so you can make sure that everything is compatible and working. On this computer, because it's an older Intel machine, all of the hardware has been detected properly so it seems to be working well. And if you're happy with the way it's looking, then you can go ahead here and install it permanently. Just know that there is generally not an easy cross upgrade from Windows to Linux. So it is kind of a nuke and pave kind of scenario. So you definitely wanna get your data backed up or maybe install a second hard drive or something just to keep everything safe. But you will be doing a very permanent thing by installing uh, your Linux distribution on your boot drive. And that's why you definitely wanna spend some time with this first. But what's cool about this is that just out of the gate, you got everything you need here to get started. You've got Firefox on here. They've got a means of installing other applications so that you can get different web browsers going. You've got a full office suite here as well. Um, so for example, I can boot up a word processor that is very similar to Word and Excel equivalent uh, all through LibreOffice here. It is running a little bit slower because I've got it running off of an external hard drive at the moment, but it is really a functional computer. And once you get everything installed and operating, I think you might find that Linux will run on your old hardware better than Windows does, especially Windows 11, uh, because a lot of these distributions are geared towards a more efficient operation. So this is definitely something to look at. In most cases, it should be a pretty seamless upgrade or, or cross grade at this point. Um, insofar as having everything work. There are always a couple of exceptions with drivers not working and whatnot, but that's why I like this live boot option. You can check and see if everything is working before you commit to something more serious. But this is probably a great way to get another five years or more out of your older computer here. And this one is certainly uh, on the older side and is running this 
alternative operating system quite well. This is why whenever I do PC reviews, we look at Linux compatibility because at some point the OS is not going to be supported any longer and it's good to know that you do have alternatives, especially nowadays where these open source operating systems are so good and so close to their commercial uh, competitors, in fact, in many ways, sometimes are better. Now, one last consideration here is how much memory you need. So on this XFCE edition of Linux Mint, on the desktop with nothing loaded here, the basic overhead of the OS is about 1.2 gigabytes of RAM. So if you have a two gigabyte machine, you're cutting it close, but you could probably still do a few things. Just don't load up too many things at once. On a machine that is typical of what would be uh, not compatible with Windows, but still functioning in 2025, you probably have four gigs of RAM. And if that's the case, you've got plenty of room uh, to make use of this operating system. So if you're pretty much at your wit's end with Windows, definitely check out uh, Linux Mint or some of the other low impact distributions that I think will breathe a lot more life into your computer. So hopefully this was helpful in trying to figure out what your options are moving forward. Obviously the path to least resistance is that if your computer is compatible with Windows 11, you can upgrade for free. You'll be fine for another couple of years and you'll be good to go but you might see your system getting a little long in the tooth as Windows bloat continues, and you might have better luck with something like a Linux distribution that is often designed for efficiency and keeping older hardware running longer. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.